Well, one Republican lawmaker is now calling for congressional hearings to investigate why the U.S. military has rescinded two invitations to conservative Christian leaders in recent months. Last week, we heard about Franklin Graham losing his invitation to the National Day of Prayer. And in February, it was Tony Perkins, the president of the Family Research Council. He was supposed to speak at the National Prayer Luncheon at Andrews Air Force Base. That invitation, although it got less coverage, was also revoked. And now some are saying this is all because of the men's politics. Tony Perkins joins me live. All right, Tony, so this is so interesting because you've got uh, one conservative Republican from Georgia now wants congressional hearings, saying first Franklin Graham uh, last week was, was booted. He had his invitation revoked. You in February had your invitation revoked. And some said it's because of the positions that you've taken uh, that oppose President Obama's policies. Do you believe that? Well, it does appear that uh, under this administration, the DOD is being turned into the Department of Disinvitation for Conservative Christians. And it does have to do with issues, whether it's Franklin Graham on his views on radical Islam or my views uh, in, in support of present law regarding homosexuality in the military. It, it does appear that this administration is using the military to advance its, its agenda. And, and that's concerning, especially as a veteran of the Marine Corps. I'm very concerned about how the military that is highly respected in our country, and rightfully so, is being used to advance this administration's agenda. You know, we had a statement from an Andrews Air Force Base official that was given to us. This is just yesterday, so this is heating up again. Your, your, uh, the, the re revocation of your invitation in February, heating up again in the wake of this call for congressional hearings. And what the Andrews official told us was that you were not disinvited because of your position criticizing President Obama when it comes to gays openly serving in the military. You were disinvited because airmen on the base, according to this woman, complained about your remarks made about the president on your website. And I think specifically they're referring to your remarks saying that the president, quote, is willing to jeopardize our nation's security to advance the agenda of the radical homosexual lobby. That's what you said. And I stand by that statement. That's exactly what advancing uh, this repeal or this uh, overturning of the law would do. In fact, 14 congressional studies have shown that in the last 16 years. I stated a position that was consistent with current law and said this president, who didn't call for the military to review how this might impact, the, re the overturning of this law would impact national security, he said, tell me how to get it done. I want it done, and that's what the Secretary of Defense has said. So, yes, I stand by that statement, and the disinvitation came two days after that statement. But she says that uh, was and, coincidental, and what in fact happened was that airmen complained. They're supposed to be apolitical at Andrews Air Force Base. And she says that some complained and said that they would not attend the prayer luncheon if you were the guest speaker uh, because of those comments. Megan, I, I, I talked to the chaplain there on the base. Uh, after the invitation was uh, rescinded, because I wanted to know what was going on. Because right. this, the, the, the homosexual community is very active in doing phone trees like that. And I inquired when they told me they had received these calls, how many calls? They had received 12 phone calls. Uh, that's pretty insignificant. What's happened is that this environment of political correctness is enveloping our military. There's fear among chaplains, there's fear among officers to offend uh, those higher up who are taking their orders from the White House. So th this is further evidence, what we saw last week with Franklin Graham. And that's why Congressman Kingston calling for this hearing I think is justified. The military should not be used to advance a, a political agenda, whether it's right or left. The military is there to fight and win wars, and they do a darn good job of it when the politicians stay out of the way. When you were supposed very to concerned. When you were supposed to show up at Andrews Air Force Base, Tony, were you going to make comments about the president or about politics, or was Not it strictly all. about Not prayer? At all. Not at all. I was called, uh, as I, I mean, look, as a veteran, as an ordained minister, I often speak to members of the military, or I did, uh, in, in groups like this. And, and my message was a scriptural message based upon the greatest commandment to love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, there was, it, it had nothing to do with the message that I would be presenting. Same thing with Franklin Graham. I know that Franklin Graham's message would have been about the gospel of Jesus Christ, ministering to the men and women in uniform, but that's not why he was disinvited. It was, he was disinvited because he doesn't fit into the political correct model. And I think that model is being shaped by the administration. The bad guys here are not the, the, the military. The military is, again, the men and women there are doing a heroic 
job fighting two wars. They shouldn't be saddled with this administration's political agenda. That's wrong. It well, what's your theory? How do, how do you think that the administration is, is, you know, funneling this down? I mean, how do you pin this on anybody other well, than those who actually made the decision? Well, let's go, for, let's go back to the President's State of the Union address where he announced he was going to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And then just within a week, you had the Secretary of Defense, who works for the President, and you had the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, the only member of the Joint Chiefs, who has come out and said we should repeal this law. And the message was sent when he testified that nobody who disagrees in uniform should dare speak out. In fact, General Mixon, a three-star Army general who spoke out about a month ago telling his men to voice your concerns about this, he nearly was drummed out of the army after a distinguished career because he dared challenge the administration on their policy. I got to go, but it's I want to ask you one other uh, one other question because this Andrews Air Force Base official also pointed out that you haven't been boycotted. In fact, you've been invited to speak at an upcoming Air Force Chaplain Summit this fall, and that you've accepted. So you know, her well, point that is was you verbally. It was verbally extended. I have not seen the, the formal invitation. I'm hoping it comes, and I will be there uh, if I can, if, uh, if the invitation comes. Uh, well, Tony Perkins, we appreciate you coming. We'll, we'll be watching it to see whether, in fact, anybody else in Congress is interested in having hearings on that. But all the best to you, and thanks for thanks, coming Morgan. on. Thanks.